Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I have the all new Adidas 4D Forward 2, and these things are absolutely nuts. Let's get into them. And a big thanks to Adidas for sending me a pair of these and inviting me to be part of the launch of these shoes. Uh, you know, typically when a company sends me a pair of shoes directly or asks me to like be part of a launch of a shoe, I'm usually pretty hypercritical of the shoe just so I can kind of exert my independence and I want to give my own opinions. Uh, and after wearing these for just like two days, I, I just completely became a fanboy of this technology. Even though when I first got the brief on them and all the tech that was in them and the kind of the tech specs, I thought to myself, all right, you know, is, is there really tech behind this or is this marketing and uh, I was completely and utterly humbled by kind of the engineering of these shoes. So let's get started in the uppers. Now the uppers of the 4D forwards are, are kind of a lot like the Ultra Boost 22s. It's made of Adidas Prime Knit Plus. Now why I like Prime Knit a lot is it allows the shoe to be made more streamlined and more aerodynamic but also to accommodate a lot of different foot types. Now Adidas Prime Knit is the polar opposite of a lot of other upper material setups whereas a lot of uppers you'll see have a lot of different paneling and different layers. Adidas Adidas Prime Knit is just one continuous woven layer. The catch is, is that Prime Knit is a woven layer of thermoplastics. So they're ultra strong and ultra flexible, but also because it's just one continuous woven piece, you can make it more dense in areas you need more strength, like on the lace line, and less dense and more flexible in areas you need it, where you might need to accommodate different foot types, a high arch, a bunion, or something else. You know, the best part of this hybrid slipper tongue, three-piece tongue, is that you're getting the best of both worlds. Number one, you're getting the glove-like fit of a slipper tongue shoe, a little more of that easy break in, more elasticity of a slipper tongue shoe, but you're getting the security of more of a high-backed traditional three-piece tongue. Plus you have those rubberized eyelets right at the ankle collar. So it really give you more of a feeling of a three-piece tongue in terms of security, but also more of that glove-like and second skin type fit of a slipper tongue or booty liner. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, you can see what I'm talking about, a much denser weave here of yarn or on the outside, and the Dremel does not bite through the first layer of yarn. So even though it is a flexible and soft material, it still has incredible strength, number one, to containment, but also to abrasion. But getting into the midsole teardown, this is where the real engine of this shoe comes to life. And I say that both figuratively and literally, because this midsole is a true dynamic type product. It actually is doing work for you, which is really kind of interesting to your head wrapped around. Now, the whole idea of 4D forward comes just from basic ground reactive forces or what we call in running braking forces. And what that means is when your foot is coming down to strike, whether heel, midfoot or forefoot, What's happening is you're putting a downward force into the ground. At that time, the ground then puts an equal and opposite force back into your leg. Now, that doesn't necessarily propel you forward. That force goes straight back up to your leg, creating almost a braking effect. And so if you're someone like me that can get into kind of poor running technique and you start extending your leg out really far, those braking forces are then coming right back up your leg. And it's that much harder to get your body weight back over that leg. And that's where shin splints can come from. And so a lot of times you see the most elite runners in the world, that's why they're striking midfoot or forefoot, because they're trying to keep their body weight over their leg. They're trying to use their own body weight as momentum to kind of counteract those braking forces. Whereas in the 40 forwards, they take all those principles of sound running techniques and actually put them into a dynamic midsole. And so the whole purpose of this midsole is to counteract those braking forces and turn them into forward forces. Now how they do that is this entire midsole is an entire bed of what they call EPU 44. Now that's an elastomeric polyurethane. So there's no foam in the midsole. And what this basically is, is a super strong elastic plastic. And as you can see, this is arranged in these little bow tie patterns all the way going down in this lattice pattern. And because EPU 44 has a higher, what they call green strength, they're actually able to make it into very small, intricate 3D printed cells, these bow ties you see in there. So each bow tie you see in there is just ridiculously strong compared to your standard foam setup. But the real feat of engineering is because they're able to 3D print the midsole, they're able to create these corridors where no matter where 
where you strike on the shoe, that vertical braking force is then turned into a linear or horizontal forward force. Unlike a standard foam setup, where as soon as it compresses, it just expands back up until it starts deforming and then it just turns that energy into heat. These shoes, what happens is when you compress down, the energy can then go along a horizontal corridor and actually give you a forward pushing force, almost like a people mover. And so versus a standard foam setup shoe, these are gonna give so much more energy return because it is literally creating almost like a floating or hovercraft type effect forward versus just up and down. That's why the midsole is more dynamic than static. And just taking all that engineering speak out into the real world, if you look at the jump height test, I got 40 and a half centimeters of jump height on these in a shoe that has no rigid shank, nothing to give you that diving board effect, which just makes it perform like something that's a super maximalist shoe, but feel like something a lot lighter and more nimble. And getting into the outsole tread, this is a continental rubber outsole tread. And you can kind of tell they took the inspiration from from pretty rugged snow tires. This is pretty much, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So as you can see here, this is pretty much just a standard welted kind of snow tire design. It is one continuous pattern because there is no shank to break up the shoe. You can make it one bed of rubber. Now, as you can see here, you do have two different colors of rubber. One here, you can see where your strike pattern would go. However, the durometer or test of hardness of both of these rubbers, the white rubber is 15.9 on average and the orange rubber was 17. So not a huge difference there. And if you look at it on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, not even a millimeter of damage on either part of the rubber. This has been by far the most durable rubber of any running shoe I have tested this year. It's not even close. And what I like about this is, is because the shoe is so nimble and because it does give such good energy return, you can use them on asphalt, concrete, you know, the street type running, but you can also take these on more rugged trail types, especially because the yarn and the upper is a little bit more resistant to abrasion. So even if you're on poorly maintained trails, you're going through brush, you're gonna have a decent grip, number one, but they also won't feel like ice skates on slippery or wet surfaces, but they're also not gonna feel too, too tacky when you're on dry surfaces and you're trying to get up to kind of more race pace speeds. And in terms of the fit of the 4D forward, a lot of similarities to the Ultra Boost 22. If you're a narrow foot, definitely wanna go down a half size. And if you're a medium foot looking for like a really true one-to-one -one type fit or glove-like fit, you might want to go down a half size as well. 2E foot, you can go true to size. Even over a 2E, I really don't think you need to go more than a half size up on these because they are so expandable. Now, the one thing I did notice is it did take me about two days to get the lace line broken in because the lace line is so strong on these. Plus, you have the really dense woven knit up here. It is going to take about two days to get that to feel really buttery on your foot. So when you first get these, I would wear them around the house for an hour or two, maybe to work the next day, just to kind of get that lace line a little bit broken in just to get that vamp right here in the middle of the shoe to break in after that zero problems and in terms of runnability or who are the best runners for the 4d forward you can either be a four foot striker mid foot striker or a true heel striker and still get the exact same benefits from the shoe as you can see the posterior heel is really kicked out and that's not just for window dressing that's so if you are a true heel striker there's still enough surface area and enough of these little lattices here that when you come down you can still shoot energy through the shoe. And that's where I noticed the biggest difference between the 4D forwards and other shoes. And I was doing my little treadmill test there where I intentionally strike heel, midfoot, and forefoot just to see how the shoe interacts with different strike patterns. I noticed that when I was striking true heel and really overextending, I was not getting nearly as much strain in my legs on these as even some other super shoe models. And that translates to why these shoes are so good over longer distances and why these shoes give you so much more energy return and more forgiveness in your leg. It's because they decrease your energy expenditure because that's taking it up for you. Whereas like you know, any shoe can feel good over a couple miles, especially if a foam is new. Once it goes through what we call plastic deformation though, which means once the foam is permanently deformed, kind of with your foot imprint in it, it starts to lose a lot of its ability to take energy and to return it to you. It starts taking more energy in terms of heat and that's why the foam starts deforming. Whereas on this, where it's an EPU or an elastomeric polyurethane, that material wants to get back to its original 
original shape. So every time you compress it, it's compressing back at you even harder. And that's why over those longer miles where some other shoes are starting to deform and all of a sudden your foot's starting to heat up because they can't take the energy anymore. It's just kind of building up as heat. These are sending the energy through the shoe and through the shoe more. So whereas at the end of a race or at the end of a really long run, your leg muscles are still gonna have the energy for that final kick. Somebody else's because they're using their own leg muscles to try to make up the deficit of the shoe, their legs are starting to get tired and their kick is not gonna be as effective. So I really think the longer the miles you put into this shoe and the more force you put into this shoe, the more it is gonna give back to you and the more you can extract from it. And if it sounds like I'm fanboying out on these shoes, it's because I am. I really do think 3D printing is the future of midsole technology. You just get such better durability. Remember, running shoes have to take a lot more pounding than a basketball or a tennis shoe do. Remember, on a tennis, you get a changeover, the shoe kind of gets a break. Basketball, if you sit on the bench, the shoe gets a break. Whereas if you're running, especially marathon, ultra marathon, uh, the shoe is not getting a break. So you really have to put a ton of engineering into these things to make a shoe elite. And I do think this kind of more lattice technology and the more 3D printed technology where you can actually get a dynamic midsole really kind of is the future here. So uh, if it does seem like I'm really gushing over these. It's because from a foot doctor perspective, it does give me a whole new palette of things to recommend to people to start combating really common injuries I'm seeing day in and day out. But of course, love to hear your thoughts. Are you a fan of more of this kind of futuristic midsole technology? Are you more of a meat and potatoes and foam type person? Let me know down below. And if you want to see the younger sibling to the 4D forwards, the Ultra Boost 22, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and laws of motion. I'll see you in the next video.